My name is Barbara Banda. I play for Zambia Women National Soccer Team. Barbara Banda is a name you must know and learn because her case should set off the alarms. She has been taken off the roster and removed from the team. The reasons, at least at first, appeared shady and insufficient. We saw Barbara Banda being uh, ruled out because of gender eligibility issues. Uh, how is it that she could play in the Olympics and now she can't play at, at this tournament? When a reporter asked the tournament organizers why this occurred, here was their response. You were talking about, uh, Veron, uh, this lady where there's a problem of eligibility. Uh, you want to respond to that? I think what we'll do is that we'll advise you on your question in this. And uh, I mean, we had checked with our medical government. I know you have said, asked this question before. And uh, according to our medical committee, there is no such decision from them. Where's that Tyler meme where he's like, so that was a f***ing lot. Thanks, Mary. Mary, the editor. Round of applause. Barbara Banda is just 22 years old. She has played professionally in Spain, then moved on to play in Shanghai, China. In 2020, she played for the Zambian national team. In this ever-changing climate of what appears to be conservative dominance, the ruling went as follows. Originally, the reasons the CAF gave for Banda's exclusion were a generic, limited intel approach, telling the media it was for medical reasons. Then, we learn the truth. According to Mundo Deportivo, Spain's daily sports newspaper, Banda has been excluded from the tournament after blood tests found an excessively high level of testosterone and a manly body. This man's name is Sidney Mungala. He serves as communications manager at Football Association of Zambia. When asked of Banda's case, he gave a wish-washy answer. Mungala said participating teams had to adhere to tournament regulations before the start of the tournament. He said that Banda was among the players who failed to meet the regulations. He then claimed it was unethical to disclose what is going on behind the scenes. In the absence of an official explanation for withdrawing Banda from the Zambia national team, several media reports say that the vague medical reasons relate to high testosterone levels following blood tests. It is said that the unusually high testosterone levels in women make them faster and stronger. If this sounds familiar, well, it should. There is a growing backlash over a landmark ruling against Olympic gold medalist Castor Semenya. The sports world's highest court ruled yesterday that Semenya must take medication to reduce her unusually high testosterone level if she wants to compete. Basically, Semenya was so good and so dominant that her competitors and coaches decided, screw this, and she was taken to court. She wasn't being banned because she cheated, but because sports officials had decided that she no longer qualified as a female athlete. It all started in 2009, when Semenya, then 18 years old, won the gold medal in Berlin in the 800 meters. The International Association of Athletics Federations announced at the time Semenya would have to verify her gender multiple times in multiple locations simply because her physique, the tone of her voice, and her dominance make some uncomfortable. We have more now on a controversy that has erupted in Germany after a championship track meet there. The big question this morning is whether one of the runners should be in the men's or women's race. So at the time she offered to strip down and show her bare naked parts. And that's when World Athletics demanded a report of her internal organs. They learned Semenya had testes, not ovaries. Testes are usually seen in men. The Guardian wrote Semenya has a condition known as hyperandrogenism, which is characterized by higher than usual levels of testosterone. Because of this, she was forced to lower her T levels. I would say that, you know, having a higher testosterone would be a similar advantage to having a long arm span or a long torso in swimmers. Because of this, Semenya was forced to lower her T levels. Here were the effects. Semenya told HBO Sports lowering made her sick, gain weight. She had panic attacks. It's like stabbing yourself with a knife every day, but I had no choice. I'm 18, I wanna run, I wanna make it to the Olympics. That's the only option for me, she said. The World Medical Association disapproved of World Athletics' decision to lower T levels, demanding the immediate withdrawal of the regulations. 
calling it discrimination and unethical. You see, it isn't just Semenya and Banda. Annette Nagessa was told she had to lower her T levels. She was barred from competing. After having surgery to remove her testes, that is when she suffered crippling effects to her body. And per Nagessa, World Athletics could care less. Maximilia Amali of Kenya also had higher T levels. World Athletics requested lowering. Amali rebuked it saying, God wanted me to be the way I am. For Semenya, she lost her appeal in 2020, ruling their initial regulations of 2018, which stated intersex athletes who have a disorder of sexual development and have both X and Y chromosomes, the standard male pattern, would have to lower their testosterone levels to keep competing in women's sports. They even called it discriminatory, but proceeded anyway. Which brings us back to Banda. The sports industry had their chance to nip this in the bud and set a precedent, and they failed all of these athletes. Aaron Reed asks simplistic questions on the TL. What do we do when cis women fail the criteria used to ban trans women from sports? Why should a cis woman be banned from producing too much testosterone naturally? If a cis woman is not banned for that, why should a trans woman be? 